Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're gonna do the Staggered Stripes Crochet Shawl. Now if this were my shawl, I probably would have thought about calling it the Reflection Shawl because once you see how this is working, you'll see it's almost a reflection of each other on each side of the shawl. Let me uh, take you to the last page and let me show you what I mean. So on the last page you're going to see that it is a shawl that points down. So we're gonna be starting off from the very top and then going as long as you need to go. So it's one of those shawls that you can make for a child but you can also do it for a grown adult depending on where you wanna stop. Every one of these rows that you see here, the colors are made up of three rows in order to do it. And you will notice that in the center here it changes color. So what's happening is that when you're going across the shawl you're jumping to a different ball and then completing the other side and then coming back and then jumping back over um, to this side with the other ball. So you'll notice that it's a reflection. So the center point of this here is, is the definition between uh, using your balls. So basically you're using a different set of balls on this side and then a different on this side and you'll see this is the same way. So it's a really neat idea in order for you to accomplish and the pattern striping is available to you. You will find that instructions and it gives you ideas here that you would like to do. So it gives you all of the information so you can just go through that in more detail than it is for me. So I'm gonna get yourself started. I'm gonna show you how to do that transition. So let's turn this upside down. So when we go to crochet, we're gonna be using one ball on one side and then we're gonna jump over and then finish it with the other ball. So we're gonna be using a Karen, uh, Pan Karen and Pantone for this particular one. And uh, what it is here is that this is the braid yarn. So this is just using uh, three colors of each of the braids. So three of this and then three of another. So you're gonna un want to un uh, take this apart. We have tutorials available on that and then you can use that. So I'm just gonna use some scrap yarn today just to show you how this concept is done. This here is a luxury product it, it is available at Michael's and uh, you will see that also at yarnspirations.com. So there is Karen and Pantone Bamboo and there's Karen and Pantone Regular right here and it's a higher end yarn than everyday value yarn. So back to page one we go. So I'm recommending a five millimeter size H crochet hook which is in my hand. Karen and Pantone uh, bamboo is what was used for this and you'll notice this yarn really has a beautiful drape because of the bamboo. So you can obviously use other brands of yarn if you wish and you can kind of substitute really quite easily with that. So the whole point for this tutorial is to show you how to do the transition. We had a, a email in from a, a guy by the name of Brian asking me just to show him how to do this. He's a knitter just getting into crochet and wanted to learn how to be able to jump over in the center point. So here you are Brian and we hope you have a good one. So let's uh, begin and let's get started. Get your five millimeter size H crochet hook and your yarn and let's play. For complete transparency I'm using Karen one pound yarn as my scrap yarn today. I'm Gonna create a slip knot. You'll use your Karen and Pantone if you would like to do that and let's begin. Create a slip knot and put it onto your hook. This is classified as an easy level and it really is once you get started. So we're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and once you get your five done insert the hook into the beginning chain and then yarning over pulling it through and through and that is the center point of the back of your neck for your shawl. So now we're gonna have to get our second color ready because the first pass uh, are, uh, are partially around this we're gonna be using this color but then we're gonna jump halfway in the point to the next color. So I have a contrasting color I'm gonna be using yellow to be able to do that. So let's take a quick break get your yarn ready and let's begin. So the first row here is gonna be a little bit fumbly because we're gonna get ourselves started. So don't let that deter you. You're gonna chain three. It counts as your first double crochet and then we want to double crochet two more times into the center of this ring. One and two. Just like that. Now we're gonna wanna chain one only with this yarn and get that secondary yarn. Now I'm recommending you don't put a slip knot in this thing at this point. Just loop it and you will bury it underneath. So using the secondary yarn I want you to pull through and pull through one. So you just chained one with the new color. I want you to let this color here fall to the front side of the project. Okay, the, the other uh, yarn is falling to the front side of the project. It kind of matters later and you'll, you'll probably notice that yourself. So now that you've chained one with the new color you're going to put three double crochet and continue to bury in the straggler from the very beginning and also this yellow as you go. So just bury it underneath the stitches as you're crossing over and pull things nice and tight and double crochet a total of three times. So now I've got one in there now. This is number two and number three. 
just like that. So you can wanna pull things nice and tight and then what I want you to do is turn your work and let's begin row number two. So row number two we're using this uh, uh, gold color I'm just gonna say it's gold and so you're gonna chain up three. So one, two and three and in the first double crochet which is straight down I want you to put in two more double crochets and we're gonna start creating the granny um, square effect of this. So technically what it has is that you have the chain three which counts as a double crochet and two more so there is your three. You're gonna chain one and then what you're going to do is coming into the next space this is the corner you're going to apply three double crochets first. So one, two and three and this is going to be the start of the point. So that's one side of the point chain one and now just let this fall to the front side and pick up the one that you dropped before and use that to pull through. So that is your second chain of a corner. So if you're familiar with um, granny squares it's usually always chain two in the corners unless stated otherwise. So that was your chain two. Now coming into the same space I want you to apply three double crochet. So one, two, and three and then chain one and in the very last turning chain I want you to apply three double crochets in there. So one, two and three and that was row number two. So you can see we're getting ourselves established and if this was the Karen and Pantone um, and the third uh, row we would be changing the colors then at this particular point. So uh, sorry at the next uh, time that we're gonna turn. So we're gonna turn and then we're gonna keep this color one more time and then we're gonna change it and I, I'm gonna do that for you on camera just to make sure you get it. So to start then is just chain three. So one, two, three and in the same one straight down I want you to apply three double crochets. Are you starting to understand the pattern? It's that simple. Chain one and now come to the next chain one space and apply three double crochet. So you're getting bigger. And then chain one and then in the corner you're gonna start it. So you'll get three in there first. So one, two, and three. Okay, you're gonna chain one and now drop it, come to the front side of it and then pick up the yellow. So if it's getting tangled on you just spin it so it's not uh, tangling. So pick up the yellow so make sure the, um, the red stays in front. It matters and just pull through. So that's your second chain of the two for the corner. Just pull things nice and tight and then put in three double crochet into that corner. Okay and then chain one and then three double crochet into the next chain one space. So you're just essentially getting bigger. Okay and then chain one and then in the final turning chain apply three more double crochet and that concludes that one. So every third row okay so you're gonna go one, two and three and then you change colors in order to do that and you'll see that on the pattern itself. So to change colors what you're going to do is that you're just gonna finish off your yarn. So what you can do at this particular point watch what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to release this yarn here and I'm just gonna cut it so I have it to start up another one and I'll create a slip knot to begin and on the final two, so on the very final double crochet instead of finishing it just use the new color to finish that. And then you are going to use this yellow here and you are going to trim it and you're gonna bury it underneath the stitch work. So just turn your work and you can use a tapestry needle if you wish as well. So just turn your work and now you're using this color. So you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and lay down these stragglers that you just cut so that it's underneath that stitch. So just wrap and when you go in keep those stragglers on top and so see it's getting stuck underneath. 
and you'll put it in your three double crochets as you normally would. And then what I would do is once you've got that trapped in just pull things nice and tight and you're gonna use a tapestry needle then to hide the remaining of that and I'll show you that too. So chain one and then coming into the next chain one space for three double crochet. Chain one and so you'll do three rows of this new color combination. So on your Karen and Pantone you'll see that the colors are amazing and uh, it really works out. So once you come into your space, so one, two, and three. So chain one and so you'll get a new color. So I'm just gonna say it's yellow for just for argument's sake. Don't create a slip knot. You'll see the knot on the on the tip if you do that. So just don't create a knot and just pull through. And then into the, let the per, uh, red come in front and trap that yellow underneath. So wrapping in and trapping it underneath for three double crochet. Chain one. Okay, so just pull things nice and tight. Like not like really heavily tight but just enough so it's got all the tension gone. So then just pull through. Uh, sorry then chain one and then three into the next and go all the way to the tip. And then chain one. Next one. And chain one. And then final. It's in the turning chain you'll put in three double crochet. So that's it. So you just have to turn your work and then just keep changing over when you get over to the center point. So I want just to review to you how to hide these loose ends in uh, when you're getting this especially when you're changing colors you're going to want to secure those in so everything remains nice and tight when you go to do that. So um, I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So let's say that we're done and you have all these loose ends you wanna take care of. You can do it at the time of doing it as well like when you're creating it. So create it, um, get your tapestry needle out and just drag it through the same color. So you can't go the exact same path. So you have to just choose a slightly different path but stay in the same color way. And you'll notice I'm using one strand at a time. So I went one way. I'm going another way for the second time. And if you pass through one more time, the third time, it should never fall out on you. So if you give it away as a gift, um, you don't have to worry about it falling out. But you just gotta choose a different path every time you're going in. So then take the other color that you wanna do. So I don't wanna run that yellow color through the, through the reddish color. So I'm just gonna go through the yellow. So once, twice, and three times. And you're gonna wanna do that with all of your loose ends especially the very beginning one that you started with right in the center. So you wanna do that. So now that I've done that I can just safely just trim those right out and you should never have to worry about those ever popping out on you because of, you just did that. So you wanna do that with all your loose ends and this would be how you would do this and it's really amazing. So some people would probably just wanna cut this where it is. I would not recommend it. Get that tapestry needle out so that you can enjoy this um, project for years and years because all the loose ends are then permanently secured. So this is the Staggered Stripes Crochet Shawl using Karen and Pantone. I hope that you have a great day and hopefully this was much help to you. Please let me know in the comments below. We'll see you. Bye.